two o'clock on Thursday, September 3rd. And here I am at the American Black Bear exhibit. And this black bear hears me talking. It might be walking out because it hears me talking. You can see it's panting quite a bit. Found in many forests throughout North America, black bears will meet, eat almost anything. Can you guess what they'll eat? That's right. They'll eat insects. They can even rip open a log looking for insects and honey. They'll wade in streams for fish. Like us, a bear has flat feet, which are excellent for digging or climbing a tree. They can run 30 miles an hour. Look at those flat feet. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Hey guys, here I am at the San Antonio Zoo and we're listening and watching the flamingos. These are American flamingo, which actually do not live in the wild here in North America any longer. The zoo has a special conservation program and, help, and hopes to successfully populate an area with the American flamingo. The San Antonio Zoo began breeding them in the 1960s. We are the first zoo in the world to successfully hand raise a flamingo chick. Since then, we've hatched over 600 chicks of various species and counting. Most flamingos in American zoos were either hatched here or raised during techniques pioneered right here in the San Antonio Zoo. I like going and finding shade, like in here. And right away, it's fun to look for any of the animals. I heard that most of the cats today would actually be indoors because it's so hot. I did unfortunately learn that the cheetah, after it passing away here, that they decided to no longer have cheetahs in their collection. Here we have a fossa, it's Madagascar's top predator, lounging here in the heat. These big cat-like eyes, you can't help but think that it's cute and cuddly, but in reality they have earned the title of Madagascar's fiercest predator. Did you know they can actually take down prey larger than themselves? Lemurs may be fossa's favorite food, but they'll eat just about anything from wild pigs to mice. what they mean by cute and cuddly. I'm still videoing. I wasn't expecting it to come on up. Do you know if it's a male or female? Yeah, so this is a female. She, her name is Kara. Um, she is adorable and amazing. However, she is also very vicious. Um, she has been known to climb completely upside down on her enclosure just using her claws. And when she does that, you can see her like really lean muscular body. Uh, which is actually pretty cool because they, since they aren't true cats, um, they have such a different body makeup. So they're really long, they've got that long tail to help them in the trees and the balance. 
and they've almost got like a dog face, um, but they actually are um, related to the, or they're in the mongoose family. In the mongoose, I, that was, thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing. Yeah, if I'm still out here and you would like to talk about any other cats, let me know. Exhibit, I'd like you guys to have your identification guides ready to see if you can tell us what butterflies are visiting. Right now we have one at the theater. where I step. Here we can see clearly why. So watch what happens when this butterfly opens its wings. The fruit can be attractive. It's really well camouflaged when its wings are, sh are upright in its resting position. Did you all catch that brilliant iridescent blue of the blue morphos? Even though it costs $2 to get into the butterfly exhibit, it's well worth it if you enjoy watching and observing all different species of butterflies. These butterflies are holding on. They're so close, I'm wondering if they're mating. Are? Oh, so this one's, let me see. I believe there's the wait one. Yeah, I think one. So this is kind of cool. I don't know if I can say that I've seen up close butterflies mating before. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking for no, it's okay. Time, and the guide here today at the San Antonio Zoo is looking up to identify for us. Oh, we can even see this one. It's proboscis. Yeah. All of its structures. All right, what are we dealing with? All right, so this one, let me see. It's, there we go. It's a... Uh, Oh no, I'm lying. I'm lying. A black okay. and white Helen. Black and white Helen. Helen? Yeah, black a and white Black Helen. and white Helen. And when you look up close, the patterning on those wings is really, mm -hmm. it's really delicate and intricate. Mm -hmm. And look at the shape of that hind wing. Yeah, so that's what makes the swallowtails like the group. Like you can tell. That's like right. Helen. So it does belong to the swallowtail mm -hmm. group. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm trying to hold my camera nice and steady for you guys. And you can see all of the butterflies. It's nifty to see that the hummingbird feeders also work well for butterflies. Maybe we can get a close up here of using their proboscis to drink.
They're known as the acrobats of the jungle, and it should be no wonder watching these trapeze artists. Gibbons are natural trapeze artists that can even walk on two legs along branches. I'm not sure what's in its claw right now. It looks like it might be a piece of food. Up even higher in the sky, there's some turkey vultures. These guys are so handy. So gibbons will live in small family groups high in the tops of rainforest trees. Gibbons announce their presence. These sounds can be heard for miles through tightly packed trees. Active today. Notice the enclosures because of COVID, they've marked off where you can't get as close as you used to. And there it is. I'm not sure if you all can see through my reflection. I'm gonna shift backwards to see if we can get a, a picture of it. There's our Jaguar. These wild cats are taken care of here. Such good care. This guy is hot, looking a little agitated. Either that, we're getting close to feeding time. So, despite being smaller than lions and tigers, jaguars have the most powerful bite of any big cat. They prey on armored reptiles, even. They also will use their jaws to suffocate prey. Each time my daughters come to the zoo, they love the opportunity, even though they're your age now. They always like to be able to feed the wildlife. And yes, you still get to see some wildlife, the same as you would out your back door. Up in the tree, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a vulture a large one perched there and at least I think it's a vulture from here. There it's got its wings spread and it's sunning itself. I honestly wasn't thinking of benefits for coming to the zoo this late in the day. But one thing I'm getting to see is a lot of the folks who are feeding the wildlife. This is a fantastic opportunity. I'm used to always getting to the zoo early, but today I'm here late. The zoo closes at four o'clock. 